What is up, people? BP here, and today we are going to be reading another story from Martyr's Mirror, which is an ancient book written in the 1600s by Thelman Jane Van Brat. And essentially, this is a book uh, that was compiled over many years from many ancient stories written by people like Eusebius and other ancient writers um, that this person had access to. So a lot of these documents were all just kind of compiled together. And he also had access to the ancient libraries that he had available at that time in Europe. So he was able to go in and search public records even and grab all these stories and just put them all together and uh, together with the ancient writers like Origen and Eusebius and whatever. And he was able to make this book and compile this book. And it really is a masterpiece. It is truly something to behold and something uh, to read for yourselves. And uh, usually what I what I do on YouTube is I'll make videos just kind of going through the book from start to finish. I probably will never get through this book entirely because it's just so large, but um, I am making an attempt to read some of these stories so you kind of get the picture. But it starts from the time of Jesus Christ all the way till until the year of 1660. So you can kind of read the stories of people like John the Baptist, the Lord Jesus himself, and also his 12 disciples, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and so on and so forth. And you kind of you kind of get the idea and the big picture of how they died. And, you know, where the Bible left off, this book here kind of fills in the, the details. So it, it really explains everything in great detail. And, you know, Thelma and Javen Brott went to great lengths to try to give the reader the full picture. And so that's what this does. And, you know, when people say things like, oh, where's the proof of your God? Well, here it is right here. This is absolute, undeniable proof that God exists and that God worked in the lives of people throughout history. So um, that's what this book is for, is to prove not just the existence of God, but also his provision and that he loves his Christians dearly. So people who love and trust in him will be rewarded with eternal life. And this is proof of that. And it also shows the love and devotion that these people had to God and to their faith. And just it also shows the dark side of humanity and how they treated these innocent people um, without regard to human life or to what they believed and to live peace, peaceably. So, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but this kind of persecution still goes on to this very day. And uh, some of the worst persecutions of all of hum human history is happening now as we speak right now. People are being tortured and killed for the Lord Jesus. That's why the Bible says we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. For thy sake, we are killed all the day long. So that's what's going on right now. This is fulfilling scripture. It's fulfilling the things that Jesus said that if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So that's what we're going to read today is uh, another story from this book. And I hope you enjoy this. So leave a comment and let me know what you think. And God bless. Mavilus, a pious Christian of Adrumalon, torn by the wild beasts, at Carthage, about the year 201. Tertullian writes a very candid admonition and warning concerning the impending wrath of God over all the persecutors of the Christians, to Scapula, the governor of Carthage, who, having succeeded in the place of Vigelius Saturninus, who, on account of the persecution he had exercised against the Christians, had been struck with blindness, through the righteous judgment of God, also followed in his footsteps as regards cruelty. For at his accession to the governorship, he immediately very cruelly sentenced Mavilus, a very pious Christian of Adrumalon, a city in Africa, to be torn by the beasts, who, though through a severe death, attained to a blessed end, immediately after his death great plagues were sent by the Lord over the city of Carthage, where the governor resided, as, great rains, high floods, terrible thunders, fiery signs in the air, etc. Idem abidem, eol. E. Ex Tertullian. Ad scapulam, cap. 3. Perpetua and Felicitos, of Tuberbi in Mauritania, and others, violently put to death, for the faith of the Son of God, about the year 201. Perpetua and Felicitos were two very pious and honorable Christian women, at Tuberbi, a city in Mauritania, a province of Africa. Both were very untimely apprehended, to suffer for the name of Christ, as Felicitos was very far advanced in pregnancy, 
and Perpetua had recently given birth to a child, which she was nursing. But this did not make them faint-hearted, nor so surprise them that they forsook Christ, nor did it prevent them from going on in the way of godliness, but they remained equally faithful disciples of Christ and became steadfast martyrs. According to the Roman laws, they waited with the pregnant woman, until she was delivered, before they sentenced her and put her to death. When the pains of labor seized her in prison, and she cried aloud for fear and anguish, the jailer said to her, Thou art so much afraid and distressed now, and criest aloud for pain, how then wilt thou behave, when, tomorrow, or the day after, thou wilt be led to death? Felicitas replied thus, Now I suffer as a poor woman the punishment which God on account of sin has laid upon the female sex, but tomorrow I shall suffer as a Christian woman for the faith and the confession of Jesus Christ, by these words she sufficiently indicated that she had firmly and immovably founded her faith upon Christ, who never forsakes his own, even though they be in the midst of the fire, and are consumed, God also specially strengthened her, that she might be able to endure her sufferings. With reference to this, Tertullian says, Perpetua, the very strong and steadfast martyr, had a revelation or vision of the heavenly paradise, on the day of her sufferings, in the which she saw none but her fellow martyrs. And why no others? Because the fiery sword which guards the door of paradise gives way to none but those who die for Christ. In the meantime these two pious heroines of Jesus Christ were martyred, that is, they died a violent death, for the name of their Saviour, for which they will afterwards be crowned with the unfading wreath of immortality as a triumph over the foes they overcame, namely, the cruelties and pains of death. The names of their fellow martyrs are Revocatus, Saturus, Saturninus, and Serundulus. It is supposed that the last mentioned one of these died in prison from extreme hardship, but that the others were all thrown before the wild beasts, such as, bulls, lions, bears, leopards, etc., to be torn by them. Thus these exchanged their dear lives for death, for Christ's sake. Idem, Fall 26, Colonel 3, 4, X August. In Sal. 74, and a temporary Barbdrio, Cap. 5, Beda Usuard. A du Martyrol. Rom 7. Marty. Also, 1. Pregnatis de Pen. Also, in Antiquo Lectionario. Also, Turtle. De Anima, Cap. 5. That the dead bodies of the two aforementioned women were brought to Carthage, and were buried there as testified to by Victor Utisensis, P.E.R.S. Vandal, Lib. 1. Leonids, the father of Origen, beheaded at Alexandria, Indiana, Egypt, for the testimony of Jesus Christ, about the year 202. Leonids, the father of Origen, was according to the testimony of Suedas, a bishop of the Church of Christ, and also became a martyr, at Alexandria in Egypt. His imprisonment, suffering, and death occurred on this wise, when from nearly all the cities and villages of Egypt and Thebes, Christian champions, that is, martyrs, were brought, to fight and suffer for the name of Jesus Christ, Leonids was also one of those who were brought prisoners to Alexandria, the capital of Egypt. When he had been imprisoned for some time, his son Origen, then but seventeen years old, sent him a very comforting letter, in which he exhorted him to constancy, writing, among other things, be strong in the Lord, my Father, and endure valiantly the suffering which awaits thee. Let not regard for us induce thee to do otherwise. He means to say, Three Father. Do not grieve too much for thy wife, or dear mother, or for us, thy seven beloved children, of whom I am the oldest, or become so wavering, that through desire to us would thou shouldest forsake thy faithful God and Saviour. This was in brief the import of the letter which Origen wrote to his father. It acted as a healing medicine in the wounds of the sorrowful mind of his father, so that he resolved to patiently suffer death for dot the honour of his saviour. He was finally sentenced to be beheaded, and all his property was confiscated for the treasury of the Roman Empire. This happened in the time of Emperor, Severus, about the year 201. Five of the disciples of Origen, namely, Plutarch, Heraclides, Hero, and two other men, both called Serenus, put to death for the faith, at Alexandria, Indiana, Egypt, about the year 203. At this time, Origen, though but eighteen years old, was a teacher of the faith, 
at Alexandria, in Egypt, where he taught with such excellence, not only to begin with Christ, but also to die with him, that many of his disciples laid down their lives for the truth of Christ. Among these are mentioned, by name, Plutarch, Heraclides, Hero, and two other men, both called Serenus. Their suffering and death happened in this manner. Origen, the teacher of these pious people, was in the habit of going into the prison to the martyrs who suffered for the name of Jesus Christ, to strengthen them in the faith. Yeah, even when they had already received their sentence of death, and were making their last defense, he stood by them, and, at parting, gave them a kiss of peace, as a token of his sincere love. When Plutarch, his beloved disciple, was led forth to death, he, according to his custom, comforted him, for which the raging multitude would have killed him, had not divine providence protected him. This having happened, Plutarch was put to death for the name of Jesus Christ, and died as a martyr. After the death of Plutarch, the first of the two men named Serenus, was brought forth and burned. His faith, as is stated, was tried with fire, notwithstanding he was still a catechumen, that is, one who, though he had been instructed, had not yet received baptism. The third of these martyrs is called Heraclides, and of him the same is stated that is recorded of Serenus, concerning his faith, namely, that he too was still under instruction, and had not yet been baptized, but was preparing for it. And thus he sealed his faith not with water, but with his blood. He was beheaded with the axe. The fourth that was put to death for the same faith, was Hero, who is called a novice in the faith, that is one who had only lately accepted the faith with baptism. Having commended his soul into the hands of God, he was likewise beheaded with the axe. Besides these four martyrs, there is mentioned a fifth, who was the second of the aforementioned men named Serenus. Refusing to apostatize, he, after many severe torments, was beheaded, like the last mentioned too, and thus attained to a blessed end, together with his slain fellow brethren. Compare Euseb, Lib 6, Cap. 4, with Abramel, LST Book, 457, Colonel 2, 3. Also, Joe. GYS. Hist, 418, Colonel 3, after Leonids, the father of Origen. Also, Introduction, 439, Colonel 1, from Eusebius. Two female disciples of Origen, namely, Reyes and Marcella, burned alive at Alexandria, for the faith in Jesus Christ, about the year 204. Among the disciples of Origen, who became martyrs, there are also mentioned several women as faithful martyrs. However, we shall only refer to two of these, one called Reyes, the other Marcella, who suffered their faith and lives to be tried with fire, like gold that is refined. Reyes was a catechumen, that is, one that was receiving instruction preparatory to baptism, and hence, had not yet sealed her faith with water, however, as Origen himself declares. Two female disciples of Origen, namely, Reyes and Marcella, burned alive at Alexandria, for the faith in Jesus Christ, about the year 204. Among the disciples of Origen, who became martyrs, there are also mentioned several women as faithful martyrs. However, we shall only refer to two of these, one called Reyes, the other Marcella, who suffered their faith and lives to be tried with fire, like gold that is refined. Reyes was a catechumen, that is, one that was receiving instruction preparatory to baptism, and hence, had not yet sealed her faith with water, however, as Origen himself declares, she was baptized with fire, that is, burned alive. Marcella was the mother of Potemiena, of whom the ancients speak in such commendatory terms, as having also laid down her life for the faith, but whom we pass over, on account of certain remarks which she addressed to Basilides, her executioner. After insufferable and dreadful torments, she was burned by degrees, in great constancy, until she was reduced to ashes, and thus she exchanged this temporal for an eternal life. See the above-mentioned authors, as compared with Melinus, 457, Colonel 4. Basilides, who, from an executioner became a Christian, beheaded for the name of Christ, at Alexandria, about the year 204. Not long after the death of Potemiena, who had died with the above-mentioned Reyes and Marcella, one of the executioners, named Basilides, who had brought her to death, 
was converted to the faith in Christ. Eusebius writes, being among his companions, and an oath being demanded of him on some special matter, he said, that he dared not swear at all, because he was a Christian, and did openly confess it before them. When they heard this, they thought at first, that he was joking, but when he persistently asserted it, and showed that he was in earnest, he was seized and cast into prison. When some of the brethren came to visit him, and inquired how it happened that he had become changed so suddenly, he fully satisfied them in regard to the matter. Having heard this, they gave him the sign of the Lord, that is, as A. Malinus explains it, he was baptized in the name of Christ. The following day he was beheaded for the confession of the Lord. Compare the preceding accounts concerning the disciples of Origen, with Eusebius, Lib 6, Cap. 5, 4 107, Cot. 1, 2. Also, A. Malinus, LST Book, 458, Colonel 1, 2. Also, P. J. Twisk, Crawn, 3D Book, for the year 204, 455, Colonel 2, above. Also, Introduction MSP, 439, Colonel 1.